So today we're going to be talking about special relativity. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the effect called length contraction. Now first, we have to go over the postulates. What is the foundation of the theory of special relativity that allows for all of these strange counterintuitive effects which we're going to encounter? So there are two postulates of special relativity. The first is the principle of relativity. The principle of relativity says that the laws of physics hold in all inertial reference frames. An inertial reference frame is a frame of reference that is not accelerating. It's traveling at a constant velocity. So uh, there is no rotation, it's not turning at all, uh, and there is no speeding up or slowing down. Uh, general relativity deals with acceleration and gravity. Um, the second principle is the constancy of the speed of light. Now, you've heard that the speed of light is constant, but what you might not have thought about is the fact that it's constant in every reference frame. So, if I'm standing on, a, uh, on the shore of a, of a lake, and there's someone on a boat who's throwing a baseball, let's say the boat is moving at 10 miles an hour, and the baseball is moving at 20 miles an hour. So I look and I see a baseball flying past me at 30 miles per hour, because the velocity that he's throwing it at uh, gets added to the velocity of the boat. And from his point of view, it's just moving at 20 miles per hour. Um, but the speed of light, that doesn't happen. Uh, if you shine a flashlight, it always shines at the speed of light. We observe the same velocity of the ball relative to each of us. Uh, so that's a little counterintuitive. And then another thing, this is not a postulate, um, but it's an equation that we're going to have to use later on. This equation is called the time dilation equation, and it's a relationship between the amount of time that passes in two different frames of reference. I actually have a video on it called Special Relativity Time Dilation that I would encourage you to watch. Um, so let's get started. So this uh, for this, we're going to use train, uh, and this train is going to look like this, and we're going to put a mirror on the front of the train, and we're going to put a mirror on the back of the train, and then we're going to bounce a photon from the back of the train to the front, and then it will bounce back to the back of the train. Um, this train is moving with some velocity that we're going to call v to the right. So. Let's examine uh, the velocity in, uh, sorry, let's examine um, this system in two different frames of reference. Uh, one of them we're going to call S prime. In the S prime frame, this is the frame of reference where I'm standing inside the train and I'm watching these light beams go back and forth in front of me. So here we're going to have the two mirrors and it's a very straightforward interaction. The photon comes to the front and then it bounces back to the back. Very simple. So we're going to call this distance between the two mirrors, we're going to call it L prime. Just uh, the prime is to match the frame. Now, the purpose of this exercise is if you watch the time dilation equation, the, during when, when the light is traveling in a triangular pattern, there seems to be some kind of effect on length. And uh, we're what we're going to do is examine the relationship between the length observed in one frame and the length observed in another frame. Maybe they'll be the same. They certainly seem like they should be. Why should going fast make you sh shrink or grow or change your length in some way? That'd be weird. So we're going to see if that's actually the case. So uh, the time it takes to do this um, is called t prime. And it's equal to the distance traveled over the velocity. The distance traveled is 2L prime. And the velocity of a photon, which is a particle of light, is always c. So t prime equals 2L prime over c. Very straightforward. What it, when it gets more interesting is when you're in the S frame. The S frame, uh, the, you're standing outside of the train and you're watching the train drive by. When this happens, you have the back mirror and the front mirror still, but this time, when the photon's on the way there, it takes longer to get there and it has to travel a longer distance because this mirror is attached to the front of the train which is moving to the right. So it's traveling an extra distance and the time it takes to do that, we're going to call T1. And then on the way back, it's traveling a shorter distance because now this mirror is running up to meet it, which means that this we're going to call T2. And we're going to say that T is equal to T1 plus T2. And the length between these two mirrors, we're going to call it L. Notice that I chose not to call it L prime. Uh, now this, this causes some confusion because why aren't the lengths the same? How are you why you're assuming they're different before you start? No. What I'm doing is I'm giving them different names in case they're different. 
we might find after doing some calculations that in fact the two lengths are identical, that L prime equals L. But let's go through the derivation and see if that's the case. So, uh, the distance, let's, let's set some distances equal to each other. So on the way there, um, the distance has traveled, the, the particle of light has traveled, is going to be equal to L, which is the initial distance, plus the extra distance created by the mirror moving away, which is the velocity of the mirror, which is the same as the train, which is V, times the amount of time that the light is traveling this, which is going to be equal to T1. And that's equal to the total distance traveled by the light, which is the velocity of the light, C, times the amount of time it's traveling, T1. The bottom is the exact same thing, except that this term here is going to be a minus because the mirror is running towards the light, so it's traveling less distance. So we have L minus VT2 is equal to CT2. And now we can solve on top and bottom for the T1 and uh, T2, and we find that T1 is equal to uh, L over C minus V, and T2 is equal to L over C plus V. And that means that T is equal to T1 plus T2, so it's equal to L over C minus V, plus L over C plus V. And now we're going to uh, get a common denominator to add the fractions together. So we'll multiply this side by C plus V over C plus V, and we'll multiply this side by C minus V over C minus V, since that's really just 1. So then uh, we have that T is equal to uh, the LCs add, so you have 2LC, and you have a plus LV and a minus LV, so those go away. And this is all going to be over the product of this, which is actually a perfect square, and it's C squared minus V squared. And now what we're going to do is we're going to cancel the C's, just because having extra C's lying around is kind of irritating. So we're going to pull a C out of the bottom. So uh, a C squared, actually, out of the bottom. So we're going to have this is equal to 2LC divided by, pulling a C squared out, you get C squared times a C squared pulled out of a V squared, a C squared is a 1, minus a C squared pulled out of a V squared is a V squared over C squared. And if you don't believe me, redistribute this. C squared times 1 is C squared, C squared times negative V squared over C squared, the C squareds cancel, and you get V squared. So that means that the C squared, the squared will cancel with the C up there, and you have that T is equal to 2L divided by C times 1 minus V squared over C squared. Now, this is nice, but we want to relate the lengths, L to L prime, in the two different frames of reference. This doesn't have any L primes in it. So what do we do? Well, earlier I mentioned that we were going to be using this time dilation equation. This applies in this situation. It's special relativity. Uh, v is, you know, you know, we can use it. So um, T is equal to T prime divided by the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared which means t is this, so we have 2L divided by c times 1 minus v squared over c squared, and t equals t prime divided by this one uh, square root term, and uh, we know that t prime from here is equal to 2L prime over c. So we have 2L prime over c, and it's being divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. So c times the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. And now this is awesome because the c's go away, the 2's go away, and then we're going to multiply both sides by 1 minus v squared over c squared, and it, this term is the same as that except different exponential power. So we have an exponent of 1 on the top and 1 half on the bottom, and those subtract, and you'll get that L is equal to L prime times the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. This equation is called length contraction. What this is saying is that if I throw a ruler really fast past you and you're able to measure it with one of your rulers which are in a rest frame, the ruler that is moving will actually be shorter, physically shorter compared to the one that you are measuring with which is at rest. This is not an observational effect, like something's going fast so it looks shorter. No, this is physically real. Uh, why don't we observe this in everyday lives then? Why isn't it that jet planes don't shrink? Well, they do, slightly. We just don't notice it, and here's why. Let's say 
that I'm traveling down the highway at 30 meters per second, right? That's about 60 or 70 miles per hour. So this term, v squared over t squared, we're going to plug v, uh, we're going to plug 30 meters per second in for v. So we have 30 squared is 900. Okay. And c squared, c is equal to 3 times 10 to the 8. That's the speed of light in all frames. 3 times 10 to the 8th squared is 9 times 10 to the 16th power. That's 9 with 16 zeros. And on top you have 900. So you have 900 divided by 9 times 10 to the 16th. A really small number over a really big number. Basically, it's almost zero, which means you have L is equal to L prime times the square root of about one, which is about one, so you have L is equal to about L prime. And you do not observe length contraction in your everyday lives, um, but nevertheless, it happens when you go really fast. When you get close to C, that's when these effects become noticeable, uh, because then the term in the denominator uh, becomes, uh, the, sorry, the term in the radical uh, becomes non one, not about one. Uh, so that is length contraction, uh, one of the really interesting effects. If you're interested in more of them, check out some of my other special relativity videos. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and tell your friends that special relativity is awesome.